On the night of March 28, 2019, a beautiful girl got into a black car in front of a bar thinking it was a new girl she had called, but she was wrong. The car took her life. She was stabbed over 120 times and bled out. Her boyfriend and friends tracked her location on their cell phones but couldn't save her. Who was the killer? What was the motive? Keep watching this video, Samantha Josephson, born in 1998 in Princeton, New Jersey, USA. She is the eldest daughter of Seymour and Martha Josephson, and has a sister named Sydney. Samantha was brought to a happy life, and is spoken of by her relatives and friends as a cheerful, kindly, and courteous girl. After high school, Samantha went to the University of South Carolina to study political science, where she made great friends and met her boyfriend, Greg Corbishley, a marketing major, in 2017, and Samantha joined Alpha Gamma Delta Fraternity, an organization for social service that Samantha who had planned to attend law school at De La Crosse University after graduating in 2019, has received a full scholarship to De La Crosse and a partial scholarship to Rutgers University. Her dream was to become an international legal expert, but sadly, her plans were interrupted by a tragedy that, on the evening of March 28, 2019, Samantha and her friends went to hang out at Five Points, a place in downtown Columbia frequented by young people mainly college students, and Samantha wasn't in a good mood at the time, so her friends wanted to come up for a break. They chose the Burton dog as their hangout. Samantha's boyfriend Greg wasn't able to come along, but he told Samantha to have fun and try to forget about her troubles. Around 2 a.m., Samantha was getting ready to go home. She called Greg first to say she was leaving, then used her cell phone to call an Uber, which is the foreign version of the Tic Tac, and while waiting for the Uber to arrive, Samantha called Greg again and chatted until the driver came to pick her up. At 2.12 a.m., a black Chevrolet Impala pulled up next to Samantha, who, as can be seen from the surveillance video, walked over and opened the back door and got in without waiting for the car to stop. What Samantha didn't know was that this wasn't the Uber she called, and that this misunderstanding was about to take her life. Black Impala takes Samantha away, and Greg thinks it's a little strange why Samantha hasn't contacted him again. That. According to her former custom, Samantha should have reached home and would have told him, as usual, that she had arrived safely. Greg's calls and texts to her went unanswered, and getting worried Greg decided to use an app to check his girlfriend's location. This app tracks people's location via their phone's GPS location. Greg and Samantha both installed the program so they could check where the other was at all times. Greg got even more worried when he tracked down his girlfriend's location. She's taking a route that's not at all in the direction of home. Greg then called some of Samantha's friends and asked them if they were with Samantha, but friends say no. The last time they saw her was when she was leaving the bar. Greg told them that Samantha hadn't contacted herself and had gone in the opposite direction of what happened. Friends said not to worry, maybe she's already home and just left her cell phone in the car, which explains why she hasn't called Greg at the end and the reverse direction the cell phone GPS shows. Reassured, Greg decided to go to bed, trusting that Samantha would call him the next day but the call never came. The next day Greg woke up to find that Samantha still hadn't contacted him. Samantha's morning shift was working at a restaurant so Greg thought maybe she went straight to work, but when he called the restaurant the other employees told him that Samantha hadn't shown up for work. That's when Greg realized something wasn't right. On the afternoon of March 29, 2019, Samantha was officially reported missing. Meanwhile, the boyfriend and friends decided to go on their own to find out that. They called some of the places Samantha might have been by the hospital and the police station, but none of them got any useful information, and then they went back to the Burton Dog, which was the last place Samantha and her friends had been. Greg asked to see the security footage. Through the video, Greg saw footage of Samantha waiting for the Uber and getting into the Black Impala. Greg and friends then took the footage to the police in hopes that they would find the vehicle and Samantha's whereabouts. When they arrived at the police station, Samantha's parents were already there and both appeared saddened and shocked as they told Greg that Samantha had been found, but that she had died. About 4 a.m., a group of hunters found Samantha's body in a wooded area in New Zion, more than 62 miles from where she was last seen. The autopsy revealed that the cause of death was multiple stab wounds to the body caused by a sharp object, possibly a knife, but there were so many stab wounds that the coroner couldn't give an exact number, but there were at least 120. Samantha had almost no blood left in her body, an average adult has 4 liters of blood, but Samantha had less than 50 milliliters. The case has horrified local people and is clearly unacceptable to family and friends. There's only one question now. Who's the killer and what's the motive? 
At first everyone suspected the Uber driver, but he quickly proved his innocence, because when he went to pick up Samantha, she was gone. The driver also volunteered a sample of his DNA and testified at the Columbia Police Department, so the Uber driver's suspicions are ruled up. Samantha had the misfortune of getting into the killer's car, mistaking it for the Uber she had called. And as soon as the killer drove up, he locked the doors, and there was no way for Samantha to get out of there. The police are now focusing their investigation on the only lead they have, which is the Black Impala. In the early morning hours of March 30th, 2019, a police officer on patrol spotted a vehicle similar to the vehicle involved in the crime, which was driving through the Five Points neighborhood, where Samantha was last seen. And the officer immediately followed it and asked the driver to pull over, and the driver acted calmly and submitted to an inspection. But when he got out of the car, the driver suddenly ran away and tried to escape. But within five minutes, the suspect was under police control. He's 24 years old, meet and Roland in the car. Police found bleach and other cleaning supplies, blood on the seats and trunk. And Samantha's cell phone was found in the glove compartment. All of which proved that meet and Roland was the killer. The police searched Mazur's place and also found a double-edged knife stained with Samantha's blood. Mazur's socks and bandana also had the victim's blood on them, and after testing, the victim's DNA was also found under his fingernails. And with so much evidence, Mazur couldn't deny that the, But who the hell is Mazur? And why did he kill Samantha? Born on April 13, 1995, Mazur grew up in New Zion, Clarendon County, where Samantha's body was found. And his social media shows that he attended the University of South Carolina, but dropped out, according to the university, the, with a prison record in 2018 for kidnapping and robbery. Back to the case, under police interrogation, it finally became clear why Nasser killed Samantha. The truth of the matter is that there was no reason at all. He was just trying to satisfy his own evil desires, and Samantha inadvertently got into his car. And he jumped at the chance. It was a completely random act of violence, that on July 20th, 2021, more than two years after the murder, Mazur's trial began, with prosecutors calling 31 witnesses, including the hunter who found Samantha's body, the owner of a cell phone store, an ex-girlfriend to whom Nazar had tried to sell the victim's cell phone, as well as several detectives and other experts, with defense attorneys calling no witnesses and the defendant failing to defend himself. That the first person to testify was the hunter who found the body that he was hunting in the forest when he suddenly saw a dead body that he was so frightened that he rushed to call a policeman he knew who lived in the neighborhood that this policeman arrived at the scene and reported it to the police and that both the hunter and the policeman said that they had not touched the body so as not to spoil the scene the police officers involved in the arrest also testified in court about what happened and in addition to their oral statements played video recorded by the cameras they were wearing that day mary the defendant's ex-girlfriend was one of the prosecution's most important witnesses, and she said that on the night of the murder, she was still with the defendant, but the defendant did not go home for the night, and that the next morning, the defendant drove her to work, and stopped to fill up the car with gasoline on the way, and Mary said that at the gas station, she noticed that there was blood in the car, and then she asked the defendant what was going on, and the defendant just said, mind your own business, and now when she got home from work, she saw the defendant using bleach to when she came home from work. She saw the defendant cleaning the car with bleach, and the defendant again told her to mind her own business. Mary also said she saw the defendant cleaning the knife he used to kill Samantha, and saw a rose gold cell phone in the glove compartment that proved to be Samantha's cell phone, and Mary said that she did not initially disclose to the police that there was blood in the car because she was afraid of retaliation by the defendant. Back to the defendant's arrest, she told the police what she knew additionally during the trial. The prosecution showed some surveillance footage showing Nasser walking around the Five Points area just minutes before he abducted Samantha, in which he can be seen walking past where Samantha was several times and appearing to stare at her, and a segment of the footage that shows Samantha walking towards another Uber vehicle she thought she had called, but which drove away from the scene, at which point Nasser's car was in the behind. He sees Samantha alone and seemingly looking for the car. In the next scene, the defendant parks his black Impala next to Samantha, whereupon Samantha gets into the car, believing it to be an Uber she has called. The investigator in the case said in court that it was likely that Samantha realized she had gotten into the wrong car not long after she got in, but that it was too late, and that Nazar had locked the doors so she couldn't escape. Samantha was killed in her car and then dumped in the forest. Hours after the murder, Nasser was caught on surveillance in front of an ATM machine trying to withdraw money from Samantha's car but left without success. The trial lasted seven days, and on July 27, 
2021, the jury returned a verdict in which Nathaniel Willand was found guilty of kidnapping and murder and was pleased to serve a life sentence. Upon hearing the verdict, Samantha's parents wept with grief and pain. Samantha's boyfriend, Greg, said that after losing his favorite person, he made a decision to become a criminal prosecutor to bring justice to others. The Samantha was buried at a cemetery in New Jersey, and despite the heartbreak, her parents and boyfriend attended her graduation, and in May 2019, the president of the University of South Carolina honored Samantha in a speech in which a tuxedo was placed on an empty chair to represent the place where Samantha would have been seated. And Samantha was awarded an honorary degree in political science, with her mother acting as a delegate to receive Samantha's degree certificate. 